As we acknowledge the land this morning, we ask God to open unto us the divine presence. And we can receive this right where we are, grounding ourselves in this sacred space, in this holy moment. I invite you to pause and take a breath, to feel yourself anchored where you are, close your eyes, notice your body. How does it feel? Notice the force of gravity rooting you here. And then we notice the land itself and feel how it's supporting us. We recognize this land has been home to indigenous peoples for many thousands of years. They lived and thrived here long before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land itself. We're hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. The light of Christ calls us to peace and justice in no uncertain terms. As the Gospel writer Luke says, to whom much is given, much will be required. Those of us born into privilege have a responsibility to stand with the oppressed, just as Jesus did. And in the face of systemic racism in Canada and the many ways we perpetuate it, we are called to listen and learn, to challenge and change the status quo, and to make space for one another. May this light remind us of our call to follow faithfully in the way of the peacemaker. And this light spreads, and it is filling up the space and meeting you where you are. And this is a community that you are a part of, a place for you, for your light matters. And we are committed to being a community who doesn't vote the same, think the same, love the same, but in our affirming commitments, make space for us to try together to be followers in the way of Jesus. We don't always get it right. In fact, there is no right way to move forward except one step at a time. And so you're invited to be part of this time of worship, but also this ministry and its brother and sister ministries across Canada as part of the United Church. But in this time, may you feel welcomed here.
And with those sounds of praise on your ears, I invite you to realize that the cloud of witnesses is here. Those who have taught us about praise for God, those who have made space to model faith. And so we light memorial lights for those you may be missing today, those birthdays or anniversaries that are going marked, but they are not with us in person. And so we hold their light as a sign of the cloud of witnesses that have shown us lives of faithfulness and lives that draw us back to the heart of God. For this we are grateful.
Listen anew to the scripture story of Jesus walking on water, which comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, If it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. When I hear that scripture story, I'm reminded of those who've gone before who've shared it with me and with others. I'm humbled by people of faith that brought their story to this story, who have been vulnerable and honest about their faith and their doubts. Let's deepen into it through a prayer by Henry Nouwen that was inspired by the words of Vincent Van Gogh, who wrote, In the ebb and flow, we remember the sea remains the sea. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for your word of scripture today. So often in the story, we focus on the disciples or Jesus. But as we begin to glean wisdom anew, we pause in the ebb and the flow. And we remember that the sea remains the sea. And you are the sea. You remain the same sea of love and goodness. Let us not fear too much the storms and winds of our daily lives. And let us know the ebb and the flow and the sea remains the sea. Amen. This story calls us into our series on spiritual gifts, into the spiritual gift of faith. Much of this summer study has focused on the gifts of word, but today we change to focus on the gifts of deed. The spiritual gift of faith is the spirit-given ability to daily hear God's call coupled with the confidence to follow in the way. It's living one day at a time, even when life seems out of control. To live fully in faith is to live each day as best you can, for you are in this day, in this moment, and trust the rest to God. The entire chapter of Hebrews 11 describes the gift of faith in detail. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen. Persons with the gift of faith have extraordinary confidence in God's faithfulness. Because of their gift, they help the faith community find assurance to do the work of ministry. Jesus teaches about faith in the Gospel of Matthew, for truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible with God. Persons with this gift may not desire to move physical mountains, but through their gift they enable the church to keep on in faithfulness to God's calling. And if you wonder what mountains need to be moved, listen to the stories of our country, the call to right relations, the call to change systemic racism. Those are just two that are speaking loudly now, but there are mountains for us to move. Now let's be clear. Keeping on is not about doing the same things over and over again. In fact, that would be a flag for me that we aren't listening to or hearing from the ones who have faith as their spiritual gift. As followers of Jesus, endings and beginnings are written into our very story, from creation to resurrection and beyond. People with the gift of faith know that in every ending, there is a beginning. In every beginning, there is an ending. They are aware that although God stays the same and is faithful, we continue to move forward as a community. This gift is not about belief or doctrine. This gift is not given to the one who is the most certain. This gift is not found in people who stand still or refuse to move. For this gift is seen in those who are in relationship with the one who proclaims, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. This gift is embodied in those willing to get out of the boat, to take a step, to move, to trust that the sea will hold us up. Writer William Willimon reflects on Peter in this story. We often look to Peter as the rock, a pillar of our church, Peter says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Do you not find that strange? Lord, if it is you, command me to risk my life, to tempt death, to walk out across 6,000 fathoms of dark, swirling, threatening sea. Lord, if it is you, command me to stick my hand into the fire. Lord, if it is you, order me to jump out of a window. That is if it's you. Don't you find it strange that Peter was uncertain that the voice from the waves was the voice of Jesus until, unless, that voice commanded him, come on out, the water's fine. And that's how we will know Jesus, the one who is extravagantly, recklessly inviting us to leave the safety of the boat to step into the sea, to test the waters and show what our faith is made of. That's Jesus. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Those words of the gospel song come to us in today's scripture. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling to risk our lives, to throw caution to the wind, to step out of the boat and defy death. The precursor to this gospel story is Jesus calling a group of very ordinary people to drop their fishing nets, to leave their families and venture forth with him in faith. First, he says to them, I'm going to teach you to catch people. And then as they journey with him, as we journey with him, he says, now I'm going to teach you to carry a cross. Why then should we find it strange for one of those people now to say, Lord, if it is you, call me to get out of the boat and walk on the waves. Jesus calls Peter out of the boat and onto the waves. And Peter, on the basis of his past experience with Jesus, he calls out, 
Lord, command me to walk on the waves. People with the spiritual gift of faith are attuned to the command. They trust the sea to hold them up, to venture forth. They trust the promises that go ahead of us. Sometimes I wonder if I'm merely splashing about in the safe shallows and therefore miss the opportunity to test and deepen my faith. I wonder if we are merely splashing about in the safe shallows and therefore miss the opportunities to test and deepen our faith. The story implies that if we want to be close to Jesus, we need to venture forth out on the sea. We have to step into trusting the promises through risk and venture. We need to listen to those with the spiritual gift of faith for what they are attuned to, what has been and what will be. It's tricky, isn't it, to think about venturing forth in this time, to think about risking when we're watching and paying attention to how our community is caring for each other and what risky behavior looks like in terms of social distancing and mask wearing, the choices that we're making, not to confuse risk and venture is meant for the good of the community. That when we are called out of these places that are familiar into the unknown, it's for the bettering and not the harm of anyone in the community. It's how we can test that sense that God's calling us. Will it do harm? Or will it offer peace and healing? Will it make room for the ways of the kingdom that Jesus proclaimed? So as you ponder this, as you wrestle with it and stay with this story a bit longer, whether it's later this afternoon or in the dead of the night, or maybe just before dawn, you may hear a voice calling your name, a strange voice calling you to rise up, to sail forth, to risk the storm, to defy the waves. There's a good chance that that voice could belong to none other than the one we know and name in our hearts, the one who we follow with our lives, the one who gathers us into community that makes a difference in the world, the one who dares us to find the beginnings in the endings, to risk just one step and to listen for those who've been given the spiritual gift of faith to help our community to move forward. The one who says, do not be afraid. Indeed.
I invite you to join me now as we pray together. Dear God, light within all light, soul behind all souls, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the chance to gather and to listen for your voice, to become more firmly rooted in your heart. We pause to listen for the beat of your presence in all life, pulsing in the light of distant galaxies, swelling in the depths of our oceans, and vibrating in each vein of Earth's body, just as it does in our own souls. We listen for you. In lives where love has been born this day, thanks be to you. O oh God, in families where faith and forgiveness have been strong, thanks be to you. In nations where wrongs have been addressed and where visions for Earth's oneness have been served by venturing forth, thanks be to you. May those who are weary find rest this day. May those who carry great burdens for their people find strength. And may the midwives of new beginnings in our world find hope, even as they fuel our faith and reveal your hand at work. God, you call us out upon the waters. Inspire us to step out in faith. And calm the storms in our hearts and give us peace. May we trust in your vision for our lives. May we find significance in simplicity 
and may the least among us find greatness, strength in our souls, worth in our words, love in our living. We pray this as we walk in the way of Jesus, the peacemaker, who calls us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let's hear a story of the church's faith in action through our work around the world. I started on 2014. 2015, I come and realize that the project is picking up. And then my neighbors now come and gain from me. I started forming some small groups, women groups, and youth groups. In Kenya, small scale family farming is hard work with meager and often unstable returns. In West Pokot province, women are taking a lead role in improving the income of their farms by adopting poultry farming, while the men in the community prefer to herd goats and cattle. Women in this community are not valued. They are, they are being called children. They have nothing to possess in their family. The men have changed that mentality. They have seen that, they have realized that even us women we, we have contributed to the economy of the family because when we sell eggs, we can also get something children will eat. As a mother now, we cannot come and, and stay at home without doing anything. I started from two hens and one cock. After one year, I was having like around 150 hens. What made us to come up with the with this project of poultry keeping, is that women are engaged in table banging. That, way, that is where women are uh, saving and loaning out money within themselves. So we saw that when you are saving every week, you need to have something that generates money. We get to know the importance of poultry keeping from OIC training. My name is John Gichimo. I work with the Organization of African Institutes and Churches in the Program for Theology and Ministerial Formation, but I also assist in the Program of Rivalhoods and Food Security. We train uh, uh, some people from churches who are nominated by churches and build their capacity to go and uh, train you know, in the churches and community. So when the OIC wanted someone to go and tra to be trained, so they called me because I was always talking about uh, agriculture in the church. I came to mobilize my people to start keeping poultry because I saw that it is very, it is very easy. It has quick results of, of profitability. We saw that this thing here is making us also uh, proud in the community. It also boosted our self-esteem as women. So far we have like 500 members, women and youth groups. And we shall be able to come up as a community. Christ came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Through poultry farming and other initiatives of its food security program, 
the Organization of African Instituted Churches is training leaders and strengthening the ability of local communities to increase incomes and crop yields and to access and afford food in sufficient quantities and quality. Your contributions to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada help make programs like this possible. Thank you, and please continue to give. Isn't it amazing how the stories of the church around the world connect to the stories in our own lives? I'm grateful for the work of the Mission and Service Fund and the ways that people's generosity is doing this work together. Thank you for putting money in the virtual offering plate on the website or e-transferring to office at islingtonunited.org or placing checks in the mail or dropping uh, checks in the mailbox of the Narthex. All of these ways that people are giving is making a difference in our local local community, and around the world. Sarah, the owner of The Novel Spot, has helped us to create a book club that is reaching beyond our community. Um, and the new book that I really invite you to pick up from the bookstore and to read and join us on August 18th is Have You Seen Louis Velez? It's a beautiful story, and I hope it will invite you into some conversation with others. And it'll show up in a sermon from James in a couple of weeks. So the community is engaging the gift of our writers uh, and our small business owners to help uh, make a difference in the ways we see differently in the world. Stay tuned for what will happen in the fall. Uh, there will be a time of rest for our staff in these next couple of weeks as they take some holiday time and renewal as we prepare for what God holds for us in a step in faith for the fall season. Now, let's have our closing hymn together how firm a foundation.
go from this place surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ who calls us forward and know that the Spirit is empowering you one step at a time. Go in peace. Amen.